Hi everybody, this is Aaron with uh, eMediaPress.com and the Energy Science and Technology Conference. And what we have here is the latest edition of the uh, Lakovsky Multiwave Oscillator, which is available at Vril.io. And this is a basic instructional video on how to set this all up. Uh, there's a few changes from the uh, previous models as far as how the coil attaches to the saddle on top of the stands. And um, this pulse modulator is a little bit different. You'll notice that it does not have a fuse uh, for the fan because it's not needed. And there's a couple other uh, adjustments that we've made. So this is the latest system. And in the next batch that we're uh, currently taking pre-orders for is going to be basically this exact system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the components real quick, and then we're going to show how to um, assemble it and how to plug it in. And when we plug it in, I'll rotate this 180 degrees so you can see the back of the unit where all the cables fit in. So first of all, this is the control unit. This is called a pulse modulator, and it has a, uh, a resonant uh, Tesla-style tank circuit inside of here, which has a spark gap. And it is frequency adjustable on the side of the unit here. We have an adjustable uh, spark gap dial, so you can increase or decrease the spark gap um, uh, distance uh, that it takes for the uh, spark to jump and there's four spark gaps in uh, in series and uh, we have a uh, uh, outlet right here this is where you plug the power cable into and it'll fit in any 110 volt outlet and if you happen to be living in a 220 volt 50 uh, Hertz uh, country which is pretty much most of the uh, overseas countries um, it's going to be the same unit, but uh, for a little bit extra, it will include a um, inverter that you can plug the 110 volt cable into, and with that inverter, you can power it off of a 12 volt deep cycle battery, or you can use a 12 volt uh, DC power supply to power the inverter, and that's the cleanest way to do it. Um, it works much better than having universal transformers. Uh, there's power factor issues when you're changing uh, the frequency and all that. And so um, the results that you're going to get from this unit overseas are going to be identical to what we get here in the States. So on the uh, pulse modulator, this is the, uh, the main uh, off and on switch right here. Uh, we also have a timer right here. Um, most people do it between 15 and 30 minutes, 30 minutes max on the timer. And then we have an intensity dial right here, which is uh, basically for the uh, Variac. And uh, you can go from zero all the way to 100% intensity. And then we have the spark gap adjustment from minimum to maximum, and we recommend uh, for most people about 50% intensity and 50% spark gap uh, setting. And uh, when you turn it on, you turn the dial. Uh, as soon as the uh, timer is turned on, you're going to uh, hear it running. Uh, now, before we show how to plug the cables in, um, real quick, uh, down on the bottom here, we have some bases, and we also have a center uh, uh, part under here, which is a little bit little bit lower than the uh, feet. Um, I don't necessarily need to show that. that that'll be uh, included with the new units. And that'll help to kind of prevent the sag. These are really strong uh, 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 platforms, uh, but we just want to go the extra distance to make sure that uh, there is no possible sagging. Uh, these are furniture grade PVC. Uh, this particular unit has a clevis pin, so you can pull this pin out and you can raise and lower this. And in the new units, we're actually going to a fixed height and uh, the reason we're going to a fixed height is because what we found with a lot of the people using the machines is they, they, they set them pretty much in an, in, at the uh, average uh, setting and it works well for everybody and whether you're you know six foot four or you're you know four and a half feet tall it really doesn't matter you cannot escape the uh, electrostatic uh, impulses from these no matter where you, um, how big or how small you, that you are sitting in the chair and so there's absolutely no reason to even have it adjustable uh, this is the la these are the last units with adjustable. It's not needed, so we're going to the fixed height. What we have here is the uh, antenna rings. They're identical on both sides, and they are held onto the end of the coils with these clamps. And then we have a coil. This coil has fat wire on it, and then skinny wire. This is known as a transmitter coil. This one over here has only set, uh, the skinny wire, and this is known as the receiving coil. The receiving coil has just one cable that comes off of it with a red plug and the transmitter coil has two plugs. There's a black and a red uh, color-coded banana jack and you can plug the, their respective colors into there. So you'll receive three high voltage cables like these. The black obviously fits in the black and the red fits into the red. And then on the back of here, I can show you that these are all color-coded. 
and so the red and the black basically the black will fit right here the red will fit in the red and then this red will fit in a red and then if you have the ground wire here Jeff this will uh, also have a red uh, cable on it so if you're not used to having a uh, red on a ground wire disregard uh, what you know about ground wires it's red and this also goes in one of the three red outlets here and you'll notice that there's a green outlet here a green jack this is a chassis ground made for a balanced Tesla running mode and that's covered in a different video. Other than that, for the regular standard Lukowski multi-wave oscillator system, you do not need to plug anything into the green. Not only do you not need to, do not plug anything into the green. Three reds, one black, that's it. So with the ground wire here, once this is plugged into one of the reds, you can run this out to a ground rod. A uh, standard ground rod is going to be, you know, maybe about the diameter of your pinky maybe about eight feet uh, uh, in length and then you basically pound that into the ground and with a little clamp you basically just connect this to it and that's an important part of the system. Uh, we recommend that you absolutely contact your power company so they can come out and they can spray paint the lines where underground electrical lines are in conduits or where gas lines might be because as you're pounding a rod into the ground you do not want to puncture any of those uh, because it's obviously very dangerous. So make sure you verify with the power company um, where you can put the ground rod in and where you can't. Um, also, it's a good idea to have the ground rod in a location which is um, far away from the home uh, ground rod. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything if they're fairly close, but just ideally it's isolated uh, to, its, to its own ground rod. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to stop the video. We're going to disassemble uh, this unit right here, either this one or this one, and then we will um, pick it up as we show you how to assemble each part from the stand the upright, the coil assembly, and the antenna. So here's the uh, disassembled uh, transmitter coil on this side, and the assembly process is virtually identical on this side. It's just, it's just basically a mirror image. And this will basically be collapsed all the way with a clevis pin, and if you happen to have one that is adjustable, you obviously just pull the pin out, raise and lower it, put the pin back in, and that'll hold it at the uh, height that you uh, desire. And in the future units, it's gonna be just fixed uh, no adjustable height and what the first step is going to be is we're going to put the platform on it and so this is the type of platforms that we have for these and it's already going to have the three feet uh, attached to it and then what we're going to have is a uh, piece of plastic right here which is kind of a little footing and it's um, it's a little bit thinner than the feet, uh, not too much, otherwise you're gonna pivot and bounce around on the center. And there is a bolt, which is right here. And we're going to remove this uh, pan head Phillips screw. And we're going to put it right through here. And it is cut out with a little recessed uh, little area for the head of the screw to fit in. We're gonna put that through this. And then what we're going to do is, on the bottom is where that came from, and you thread it right into the uh, plastic plug on the bottom. And you can do most of it with your hand until you can't hold on to it anymore. And then you just take the Phillips and obviously uh, uh, screw it in uh, clockwise. And it helps if there's two people, uh, one person who can actually hold the antenna uh, while you're uh, putting the antenna on the clamps, and we'll, we'll go through that process where uh, uh, Jeff will hold one of those while one of us tightens it. So you just want to kind of make it snug. You don't want to over tighten it because you can strip the plastic. Once it's just kind of snug, that's all you need. And so what we're going to do is set that down here. And then on the... Uh, now is this exactly how it's going to come in the box? Okay, so what you're going to do is there's two uh, nylon bolts right here, hex head uh, bolts. And what we're going to do is just remove those. And it's very important that you do not over tighten these because you can strip the, uh, the threads on the nylon and damage it. And so there's gonna be two of these. Like this, and then there is one screw right here that we're going to remove and this is going to be longer than the two that came out of this and this is basically called a saddle 
that the coil uh, sits in. So once you have the uh, saddle removed from the coil by removing the two nylon bolts, is that you have this longer one here that came from the top of the plug on top of the stand. And there are three holes here. The one at the very end, which is cut with this recessed cutout so that the, head, the hex head can fit in there. This, you're going to screw right into the top here. You can just do it hand tight until you can't grab onto it anymore. And then you're going to want to take um, a hex head bit, and the, this size is a half inch. That's pretty standard. And you're going to do it until it's kind of snug, and then maybe, you know, not even a quarter turn. Maybe a fifth of a turn or something until it's snug, and that's all you need to do. So once that's on there, the second step is going to be um, putting this on here, like this. And what you're going to notice is that this pole right here is not centered. It's at the very end, and where it's at the very end, this is the end where the antenna goes. And so there's in these, and on the bottom of the saddle are two recessed holes also for the hex head to fit up into. And I'm just going to slide this in there and just kind of do that hand tight. We're going to do the second one real quick. Like that, and again, you don't want to snug it, you don't want to uh, crank it down too tight. And so you're just going to bring it to where it's kind of snug and maybe about one fifth of a turn, if even that much, to prevent damaging the threads. Okay, and that's all we need to do. And what's unique about this MWO system um, compared to a lot of the, not a lot of the, but there's only three other manufacturers in the world making an authentic MWO system. This is the highest uh, power output, uh, most efficient. Uh, one with the best results as far as how it runs and what you notice is that a lot of the coils are very uh, unbalanced and is leaning way over with the antenna rings where it's where it's just kind of a dangerous situation well, I don't know why they don't even uh, remedy that but what we've done is made the center of balance as close as possible to the center and that's why this is fitting at the back and where the antenna ring hangs is here to get it as close to the center uh, of balance uh, as practical now on the front of here the coil there are four nuts right here and out of these four nuts you want to remove these and you want to make sure that when you slide this piece off here like this you want to make sure you do not switch these around so what we want to do is if this came off on this side you want to keep it just like that and make sure it goes in the exact same place and uh, also on this side as well so we're going to take these four all four nuts off we're going to keep that one on that side. We got we have these four nuts, and what you see is that there's a piece of copper in here, which is soldered in here, and that is the contact. And on the antenna ring, on ring number one, the most outer ring, um, what you're going to see is that on one of these sides, um, it's sanded down. This is uh, intended to be that way so that it can make electrical contact with the tab. So if it's sanded right here, we obviously want to hold that and place it in here so that it's going to make electrical contact with the contact point. And so like I said, it's easier if there's two people. So as Jeff is going to hold, um, hold that on there, um, we're going to put that one on the right side and it's going to be, both nuts are going to go right on there. And you want to get these as centered as possible. And then we're going to do the same thing on the right side. All four nuts. And then this is a smaller one. This one is actually 7 16ths. And what you're going to do is just, just kind of hand tight where it's kind of snug. And maybe just, you know, one fifth or one quarter of a turn. Not that much. You don't want to overdo it. Just kind of like that. And then you're done. You repeat the process for the other coil. Um, it doesn't really matter whether you have the transmitter one on this side or the receiver one on this side. Um, and so once these are assembled, you just plug the color-coded uh, cables in, red and black on this one, red on this one, and all three reds go to the red uh, banana jacks down here, and the one single black one goes to the black one, ground wire, and then you're done. And then once all that's done, you basically turn it on, turn the timer how long uh, you want to use it for, and again, we recommend the intensity at about 50% with the 50% spark gap, which is halfway between minimum and maximum. And that's about it. And obviously at the beginning of this video, we covered um, plugging in the cables again. And one more thing that I want to mention is that the spacing of the rings um, is important because this is tuned. Every bit of this is tuned and is very intentional and deliberate. And so what you want to do is uh, at a starting point is to 
from the center of this ring here to the center of this ring here, you want to measure that that's going to be 33 inches. And at that distance, it's optimally tuned. And when somebody is sitting in the chair, whether they're big or small, that's usually enough space for most people. Um, optionally, you can create your own uh, stands with the plexiglass shield in here in case you don't want to zap your elbow. It's just kind of a little buzz, but um, it's harmless. Um, and that's pretty much it. And so if you have any questions or if you want to order another unit or you know somebody who wants one, just send them to vril.io, which is V-R-I-L.io, where they can uh, uh, purchase uh, the number one uh, MWO in the world that's being manufactured right now. And right now, today is uh, January 14, 2021, and we are planning on being at the conference in uh, uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho at the Kootenai County Fairgrounds, July 2021, the second weekend. You can go to energyscienceconference.com, and if you want to look at any of your books or videos, we have those available at emediapress.com. And um, if you have any questions, get a hold of us, and we'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.